All right, guys, so we're talking about how to start online programming. As you know, most of you being in the fitness space are programming online. If you haven't already been doing so, this is an opportunity for you to really start a new business and to diversify, uh, but it's also a way to add value with your current clients to make sure that they're staying engaged throughout this process. All right, so there are a few things that you need to do. I've narrowed this down to really kind of the bare bones essentials, what you need to get up and running and to be efficient with your online programming. So first thing is you need some type of system. Okay, the days of using Google Sheets is over, all right? I use Google Sheets for years, don't do it. The reason being is it's not scalable, number one, and number two, you can't integrate videos in with your Google Sheet. So everything you do needs to be linked to videos and we'll get to that in a second. You can't do that with a Google Sheet and it's going to create a lot of work for you and really not deliver the best product that you possibly could. So we use True Coach. I think it's the best piece of software on the market. I actually just started using it this past year and I can't believe I waited this long to use something as cool as True Coach. Uh, there are other things on the market, but that's the one that we're familiar with and that we use with a lot of people at this point and I've had a lot of success with, so I would recommend checking that out. That's the first thing you really have to do before you start writing any workouts or anything like that get a piece of software that's going to be easy for you to use and also for you to scale your business. Second thing is creating pieces. So once you have that software, we can start creating pieces that we're going to reuse. Warm-ups, cool-downs, those are things that can be recycled. You don't need to write a custom warm-up and cool-down every single day. You can create a database for this. So if you're squatting, you have your warm-up set that you do on squatting days, and you can have multiple variants of that. It doesn't have to be just one warm-up. We have a database of about 50 to 60 warm-up, cool-downs, and they're all specific to different types of training that we're doing. But basically what it allows me to do is simply type in the first letters of that warm-up and have it populate my programming. So I don't have to go searching for it, and I don't have to really put a ton of thought into something that I've already done the work with. All right, so again, scalability, if you wanna make sure that you're, you're being efficient with your programming, this is something that you're gonna to need to have in place. So once you have that software, getting in your custom warm-ups, cool-downs, stuff that you have saved will be relatively easy to do. Third thing is demo videos, creating yourself a library. If you don't have a demo video for every single thing that you plan on using in your programming, including your warm-ups, then you need to start that stuff right now. And you don't need to have a four minute video talking for each thing. We started off with, back in the day, with having talking videos for every single thing. And what I've come to realize is that no one watches that stuff, all right? People want a 10 to 15 second demo video, and that's it. Now, all of our small exercises, things like foam rolling, correctives, um, our assistance exercises, they're short clips of us per per performing the movement. But for the bigger stuff, like our compound movements, our box squats, our sumo deadlifts, floor presses, things like that, I do include longer talking videos so people know why we're doing the movement, they know how to execute the movement, they know the points of performance, they know different types of flaws that they might see with themselves or their clients. Um, so you could certainly include some of those, but if you're trying to kind of um, save time and get this up in a hurry, 10 to 15 second videos for everything you plan on putting in your programming. Get out in your gym or wherever you're, you're able to do it from now and shoot these quick videos, get them uploaded to your YouTube and then in your software that you're using to deliver programming. Um, and really, this could take a quite a bit of time. We have close to 800 videos and I've actually, over the years, deleted a lot of those videos. So uh, you could easily get going with, with a thousand videos, but you don't need to do that. You need to keep things concise right now. So don't worry about getting every single thing, just what you plan on using in the short term. And then over time, really on a weekly basis, you'll probably find that you're putting new videos into that library. Okay. So it doesn't have to all be at once, but this is some things that you need to start thinking about now. Fourth thing is once all this stuff is up and running, we have people using our programming. We need some type of accountability with true coach. We have the ability to send out mass messages. People can send us messages. They can ask for substitutions in their programming. We can see their results as they post them real time. We can comment on the results. We can review videos. So again, that's all stuff that you should have with whatever software you're using. 
On top of that, having things like a private Facebook group, I know a lot of you guys already utilize this, but start getting some, um, you know, some, some activity in those groups. Start posting things in there like challenges. Good time to start posting about challenges. It can be something as simple as just improving accountability with posting results and, and shooting videos of, of different movements that they're doing in the programming. Um, but this is stuff that is definitely an important part to keep people engaged and to make sure that they're getting the most from what you're providing them with. Fifth thing is, and this is really kind of an extra credit thing, you don't have to do this, and I wouldn't recommend you try to get this up and running right away, but if you have content already or you can create some content around what you're programming, this is an easy way to educate your clients as to what you're doing, also get buy-in, it improves your credibility. Content, honestly, I wouldn't even have a business if I didn't do content, all right? This is what we really built our business on and it's something that you can help build your business on, all right? Even if only a few people are reading what you're putting out, um, it will go the extra mile for the people that are using your service. They will read this stuff from you. They wanna know what they're doing. They wanna know that you're credible and that you know the reason why you're programming specific things. So this is definitely an extra credit piece that I would start on sooner than later. And it, it doesn't have to necessarily be a written article. It could be a video of some sorts, just something that adds value it shows that you know your stuff and it allows your client to take accountability on what they're doing. So they know exactly why they're doing specific things in your programming. So again, this is a bare bones list. I hope this helps you. If you have questions, we're here to help. Um, you know, anything that I can do to help you along this journey. I know that a lot of you, this might be something new that you're just starting now. It might be something that you've already been doing, which is great and obviously gonna make the process easier. Um, but if there's anything that I can do personally to help you throughout this whole situation, I would be happy to do so. I think.